Welcome to the Nook Podcast. My name is Stephen, and it has been such an honor to bring Travis's story to you. If you haven't listened to the first and second episodes in this trilogy, I highly recommend doing so. This uh, final chapter won't make much sense to you without that context. Airing this story in September is no accident. Travis went into the Marines in September. He was deployed into war in September, was married in September. This month will always have great significance for him. So it seemed only fitting to release these episodes now as a small tribute to him. His service to the United States, his dedication to his family, and for allowing God to use him in reaching out to others who are going through issues very similar to his own. Add to all of that, September is Suicide Prevention Month, and you arrive at a message that I hope will inspire many to be more mindful of what others are dealing with, and to perhaps nudge someone who finds themselves in a dark place to finally reach out and get help. God has been all over this project, and I hope to hear how this story has affected you and so many others. If you have any questions or comments about this series, please email me. The address is stephen at nookpodcast.com. And if you can't remember that, it's always in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening today. And now let's wrap up this amazing story. Travis had survived a brutal time of war in Iraq, where 14 friends, including his best friend, were not so fortunate. He was able to return home to work in the family business, but there he was dealing with an entirely different battle. Trying to contend with the physical and emotional pain, he chose an excess of pain pills and alcohol. In that downward spiral, if not for a last minute cry out to God, he would have taken his own life. I, I was struggling. I, I, you know, I, one day I I was like, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, when I was in my parents' bedroom, that way I could be found. I wanted to be found. I didn't want anybody to worry where I was. And I literally had the gun to my head. So I... I I literally said, God, if you're real, you better. Time's now. And I remember clear as day. He just said, not your time yet. Wait. And it was like loud. I've never, never had that before. Not long after that encounter, Travis met and married Tabitha and the two would eventually adopt a wonderful little boy. They both had good jobs and were raising a son. Anyone looking in from the outside might wonder, what could possibly be wrong with this picture? The sad answer was that Travis was still suppressing so much guilt, sadness, and emotional pain to the point where it was starting to affect every aspect of his life. When Tabitha felt that she had no idea how to help him, She knew she had to pray. So many times I feel like when we were struggling in the beginning and I didn't know how to help. um, And I wasn't equipped in those moments and I didn't know how to communicate. But praying was all I could do. And that was the only thing that calmed me because it wasn't somebody arguing with me on the other end it wasn't uh, and there wasn't an agenda it was just i know he's struggling right now how can i help him show me ways to help him um you know things like that so i that stuck with me throughout my years of marriage as to when i when i don't have any other resource when i don't have any other option and even when i do the praying was so helpful because I knew that the only thing that could change the situation was God and the only thing that could change Travis's 
part, the way that he viewed the trauma was God. Somewhere in the middle of this story, Travis met Debbie Lee. She runs America's Mighty Warriors, a private organization that serves military veterans and the families of those who have died while in service to our country. She was no stranger to trauma, having lost her son in 2006. Uh, America's Mighty Warriors uh, was started after my son uh, became the first Navy SEAL killed in Iraq, and that was August 2nd, 2006. And as I went through the grieving process, uh, Mark's teammates were all still deployed. And we had support, you know, from the time we were notified until the funeral. And then it seemed like after that, everybody went back to their life. And my life of the grieving process was just starting. And um, there were a lot of organizations out there that did things for the widows and the children, but um, there was not anything out there to support the parents or the siblings. And I'm not one of those people that I'm going to sit around and just complain and feel sorry for myself. And I knew there wasn't anything I could do for my circumstances, but I knew that I could make a difference for someone else because there are times you feel like not just emotionally are you brokenhearted, there are times physically I felt like I was brokenhearted. And uh, that was just kind of where we started. And one thing would lead to another and God would put me in Washington, D.C. I live in Phoenix. You don't just happen to be in Washington, D.C. And uh, when we'd have another seal come in with the legs blown off or the face blown off. And, you know, that has how God equipped me is to be an encourager. And that's, again, that's something really hard to do to go to the hospital. And not everybody can do that. But God, you know, as I did those things, gave me what I needed at that time to support those families. And then finally, in 2008, I realized this was the new, new mission that God had given me and um, didn't have the finances to continue to do this, you know, on a major, major way of my own money. And so started the foundation. And then it's probably been about 10 years ago that we added our Helping Heroes Heal program. And with that program, it's for veterans who have post-traumatic stress, traumatic brain injury, um, dealing with suicidal thoughts, providing healing therapies that are helping them. We provide uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy, hormone and vitamin therapy. And, you know, it's so unfortunate that we send our veterans off to war. We train them, we equip them. And I feel like when they come back home, and they get out of the military, then we're like, bye, go away now, thank you. And we are doing a disservice to our men and women who've served by not doing all we can to restore their health to them, whether it's their physical, their spiritual, their emotional, it's our responsibility. They were willing to give their lives as my son did for the freedoms that we enjoy every day. And it is our responsibility as a nation to make sure we restore their health to them. While Travis had spoken with Debbie a couple of times, he had never taken advantage of the services that her organization offers. In the meantime, Travis got to a point where he knew he needed help, and he finally reached out to the Veterans Administration for counseling. For me, at the time, I, I still haven't, I wasn't processed. I didn't have time to process it. I went from Marines to work. So, you know, I... I was able to bury a lot of stuff for a long time. But yeah, you, you know, it, it creeped up. We can only bury it for so long before it starts planting something else. So that was about four years ago. Um, so I, I started going through therapy and I was midway through therapy. Um, literally got into the the steak and potato part of it. And my therapist is like, Hey, I got bad news. I'm leaving. And I'm like, well, what do you mean you're leaving? We just started. She goes, no, I'm leaving the VA. I'm going to a different one. So I'm like, okay, now what? I get to start this process all over again. It was probably. And she's like, but I'm going to have my, my supervisor reach out to you because she knows what's going on with you. Um, that way you can keep in contact with her. Well, I never heard from her. So I opened all these wounds and really I didn't, I didn't know what to do with them. I, I was, 
I was just, I didn't want to leave Tab or Josiah. I wanted, I just wanted the pain to go away. Like mental, physical, I just wanted to go on. I, you know, so the night that I was going to commit suicide, I was going to go to work um, and do it in front of my work. So I had a plan. I, I, I knew what I was going to do, you know, um, Debbie Lee, who was America's mighty warrior reached out to me that night. And I just remember, and he had been on my heart you know, uh, a couple different times earlier in the week and things just got busy. And boy, when, when God tells you to do something, don't postpone it. Pick up the phone if you're prompted to call somebody, go to somebody's house. But um, that morning, I'm like, it, it came to mind again. And I said, I've, just, I've got a call. And so I just called and I said, hey, Travis, it's just just call and check on you, see how you're doing. She said, uh, I'm really struggling. Well, when you're working with our veteran community, really struggling? Could mean I'm sitting here with the gun loaded on the desk. I'm about ready to take my life. It could mean I'm having a crappy day. And so whenever I work with our veterans and they say I'm struggling, my next question is to them, are you suicidal? He said, yes. And so then if I get a yes to that one, the next question is, what's your plan? And if they tell me they got a plan, I know I need to get, you know, call 911. If they're close enough, I need to jump on the car and get there. He had someone there to help them. And Travis said, nah, I, I really don't have a plan. You know, I, I, I'm just, I'm just really struggling. So we talked for quite a while. It was well over an hour. And, you know, I shared some of the struggles I had been through and, you know, told him you're still in a battle. And she, you know, we talked for about, I want to say an hour, hour and a half about faith, family, going into battle every day with armor. You know, with you were out in combat, did you one day say, yeah, I don't think I'm going to take my gun. My shoulders, my neck's kind of tight, so I don't want to carry it today. I'm not, I'm not going to take it. You know, did you say, I don't think I'll put my body armor on today. The thing weighs 35 pounds. How much more weight do I need to carry? No. You put on everything you needed to be ready for battle. You maybe even put an extra hand grenade in there. You made sure you had plenty of ammunition. You put your entire, as we call it in the military, your kit. You got fully kitted. You got every piece of gear you needed, just in case whatever the enemy throw it. And I said, you know what? You're still in the battle. It's a different battle, but you still got to put your gear on him. And I went through some of those things, you know, that we need to do. And God talks about, you know, arming ourselves every day. And I said, you know, as he was telling me some of the stories and things he was dealing with, I said, you got to replace those thoughts. You know, God says to take every thought captive. And so I shared part of my story and where this started and how I applied it in my life and how I grew a little bit here and then we'll grow here. And um, by the time we got off the boat, I was really encouraged. I told him about our program, um, the changes that the hyperbaric could make, that it's not just emotional stuff you're dealing with, there's physical stuff. And so, you know, Travis and I, talked for quite a while and he agreed that he would get into our program we'd get him started right away and um i felt comfortable with hearing his voice and even just from the beginning to the end of the phone call and and knew that he would be okay it, it, for me it was all right someone's looking out for me there, there's a reason why he's keeping me here. So that from that part, it was like, all right, now I gotta, now I gotta put in the work. Now my mission is to make sure to that veterans do have an outlet and they know where to go for help. Then about, I want to say about a year ago, we were um, getting ready for an event, and I asked Travis. I said, Travis, would you write down your testimony? for me to share with people. I said, no pressure, because I don't ever want our veterans to feel like we did this for you so we can use you to promote us. But it was just, we'd gotten really close. Um, you know, he's like a son to me. And uh, so he said, yeah, I'll write that for you. And uh, when he sent that to me by email, I started reading it and found out that he 
did have a plan the day that I called. He was going to wait till work got done and then shoot himself in the truck so they find him the next morning. Oh, and I, he had never shared that with me before. I did not know that. And I was just like, oh, oh my goodness, what if I postponed the prompting that day? You know, we would have Travis. He's an amazing, amazing young man. Is he a perfect man? No, none of us are. But an amazing young man. And what he does for our foundation and how he continues to serve is just absolutely a, a, a six, one of our, our success stories that you, you don't know how close she can be, you know, to, to the impact of losing someone. I feel the need to jump in right here. I do not want to rush past what happened. So I will recap it for you. Travis was on the verge of killing himself unable to deal with all that he had seen and done in battle was weighing so heavy on him that he felt the only way to deal with it was to commit suicide. No one who knows Travis would have been okay with that. We can get so caught up in asking, what do you mean God spoke to you? This story is living proof, emphasis on living. Debbie just knew that she needed to reach out to Travis, so she did. This makes me wonder, how many times have I had someone come to mind and I didn't act on it? It doesn't have to be something as severe as suicide. It could be God prompting you to reach out to someone just to encourage them, let them know that someone cares and is thinking about them, praying for them. I was diagnosed with depression two years ago, and of the five boxes that the doctors use in the diagnosis, I checked four of the five. The only one I didn't check was wanting to hurt myself or others. Maybe I'll share more of that story sometime, but I am so grateful. I am being looked after now by a doctor and a therapist and I will stay with it because I don't ever want to check that last box. If you are a regular listener, you have heard me say it before. This is a subject that I will continue to address because it's just too important. I feel like the diagnosis has given me a more keen awareness so that when I see a friend who seems to be struggling more often than not, I will ask them how they are doing and I will wait for an answer and I will stress to them that I am someone who is safe to talk to. Now, some might call me dramatic and that's not my concern because I know how this feels and I am well aware how it can affect everything else. God has blessed me with an amazing support system people I know who will be there for me no matter what and I want to be that person for somebody else. Travis is doing so much better now. It's been four years since that suicide attempt. He has a much different view of his future, but it's also caused him to do a lot of evaluating of his past. My apologies for some of the audio here. Leaf blowers are the bane of my existence. I'm assuming at some point that you had to sit down and have a real hard heart to heart with Tabitha on what you'd been dealing with in that deep, dark moment. I didn't have the conversation until Debbie asked me to write my story. Hmm. Hey, hey, and looking back, I wish I would have wish I would have done it. Yeah. I wish I would have talked to her and let her know what I was doing and how that I was. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing that I feel is worth noting is is when you 
talked about your first attempted suicide that you wanted to be found and it's not lost on me that you were found i mean god was chasing you down yeah i in for the longest time it was i was put like again i, I was pushing keeping them at a one arm's distance hmm. and instead of letting um you know i i I wish I could have done things differently, but at the same time, it brought me to where I am now, where I'm able to talk about it and able to be a beacon of hope for other veterans. Cause it's not, it's not an easy thing to go through. Tabitha and Debbie Lee both have plenty of gratitude and optimism. Having that therapeutic venue has been rewarding for him to go through America's Mighty Warriors, being able to build relationships with Debbie, uh, with other Navy SEALs, with with Jocko, um, and just people who have experienced that life and that trauma specifically. I feel like he he's gotten to the point now where he doesn't feel so alone in that other people although different experiences they can relate in some aspect um it is humbling you know to think i got to be a little part of that story um but it, it's it's power and i'm so proud of him i mean that takes a lot of courage to stand up and share where your work has and admit you know in front of a group it's one thing to you know ask for help from Mama Lee. It's one thing to, you know, go to prof- seek professional help. But when you stand up in front of a crowd and share that, or you do a video to share that, but that's how changed Travis is to say, I don't want you guys to go through this. I understand there's help. And so, you know, we call that in the military force multiplier. You know, whenever you can send in an aircraft to drop bombs that would have the impact of, you know, several platoons or battalions or whatever the impact would be. And for us, Travis is a force multiplier, you know, to share his story, to share the healing that's taken place. Um, You know, that's very impactful in the lives of those people that hear it. And, you know, like mama, it makes you very proud of him. I have a lot, a lot of proud moments as, you know, seeing him as a dad recently. Um, the last couple of years our son's gone through some mental health stuff of his own and seeing Travis really um, like open up to him and relate to him and kind of build that camaraderie with him like hey I get you I understand you I I feel the same way or I've had moments like that too and just watching them interact in that way is so awesome to see because I don't have that same trauma background as they do and so I don't always know how to be exactly what they need and so they take comfort in each other um, and that's something that I am definitely proud of. Um, Travis, he he's really stepped up to be the man at the house. He does. He took a week off of work uh, a couple weeks ago, and he just did stuff with Josiah. They just went out. They went and saw movies. They went to lunch. They they just spent some good quality time together. Um, he works a lot of hours and he works really early in the morning until four or five in the afternoon and he gets home and he's tired and he takes a nap or falls asleep for a couple hours or um, he's working outside a lot of the time. So um, he's just exhausted. So I think it meant a lot to Josiah that he took that time to just spend with him. I was working and it was, we had no plans. There was nothing that we were doing together as a vacation or anything like that. So just the time that he took to just spend it with him, I think was really meaningful. 
Um, he's Travis has gotten to be very forgiving of such. There was a lot of um, conflict with his family, and he just really worked through a lot of that. Like t- life is too short. I don't want to. Uh, spend my life without these people that I love. We've had some disagreements. I want to still be a part of their life and being able to forgive those people and move forward with those relationships and mend those relationships. Travis 12 years ago would not have done that. Travis now has definitely made more effort to see the value in, in, in those relationships, even when he has a disagreement with somebody. Um, that's definitely something that's changed and I'm really proud of him for. Is there a way for you to put it into words what you feel about your own future as well as, I mean, the future of your your marriage, the, the future of your son based on this hope and determination that you have found? You know, for me, I want my son to know what I went through. Hmm. I don't think he's ready at the appropriate age yet. Yeah, to sure. Know. But, um, he knows that I struggle and he knows like Memorial Day is hard for me. Yeah. So he he knows that. He knows that there's there's certain days that I'm a little more edgy and a little more harsh on him. Hmm. And that's not on him that's for me i have to fix that yeah not it's i want him to know god and i want him to know how god impacted my life yeah in a in a huge way that not many people know about well and it's interesting too because i remember when we first talked um like i told you i wanted to be very sensitive to you to what you are dealing with what you have dealt with and uh i remember when i asked you is there anything that you would rather just keep off limits and you hesitated for a minute but then you just as quickly said no we can talk about anything because that's part of my story and i want you to know how much i appreciate that because I know that just sitting and recapping stuff like this has got to be very difficult. I can see it in your eyes that this is difficult. But if if you if you haven't heard it from me yet, your story matters, and I it's not just hype. I I do stories like this. I want to do stories like this because I firmly believe that somebody, even if just one somebody comes across this podcast and listens and says okay there's there's something for me to to hang on to then it was all worth it and i i i can't thank you enough travis i i think that's the only that's the best way for christians in general just to live through God through themselves and be able to share their stories and spread hope and I think that's important for the message is it's okay to be in the dark as long as you flip that switch once in a while won't you save 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 me won't you save save I am at a loss for words as to how I can thank these amazing people, but nonetheless, I must try. Travis, thank you for being so vulnerable and having the courage to share things that are so difficult and for your service to our country. 
Tabitha, thank you for your strength, even when you weren't sure that you had any left. Your husband and your son are so blessed to have you. To Debbie Lee, it was such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for listening to God and for reaching out to Travis in that critical moment. That simple yet so critical act will have a giant ripple effect for years to come. And anyone who knows and loves Travis has you to thank for your obedience. For my listeners, if you or somebody you know is a military veteran needing help, please reach out to Debbie at americasmightywarriors.org. And I have a link for that in the show notes. Any questions or comments about this series can be sent directly to me. My email address is stephen at nookpodcast.com. That's stephen with a V at nookpodcast.com. Oh, I've been seeking for The Nook Podcast is a production of Sozo Digital Media.